Hello Stitches of the World and welcome to my second ever uh, floss tube video. I'm a stitch too far and uh, before I go any further I would like to say a huge thank you to all of you who have watched my first video and added a like or comments. And uh, some of you requested that I discuss uh, the differences between uh, the Millennium and the Omanic uh, quantum frame. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, and because I don't want to forget anything, I've made a whole list of things that I want to discuss with you. And I'll be looking down towards my other laptop um, to make sure that I didn't forget anything. So um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is uh, why I actually decided I wanted to frame. Uh, what types of frames that I uh, found, um, the two brands that I actually ended up purchasing, um, short explanation about how they work um, and what uh, the similarities are and also what are the differences between the two, a uh, little bit about uh, sizes and price ranges and my experiences with ordering and shipping. So um, I only been stitching for about six years now, I think. Um, I started out just stitching in hand. And after a while, I started doing some embroidery, which you can see a little bit of behind me. I'll show that up in a different video. And I needed more tension, so I switched to using a hoop because hoops was all I ever heard about. Um, it was just a small hoop and that gave me a lot of uh, cramps in my hand, uh, holding it a long time. Um, so, uh, I think last year I ordered uh, Vermeer, the lady with a pearl earring uh, kit. And I was planning to uh, start uh, doing that in a hoop too, but the fabric was very stiff. and. I was worried about um, distorting the fabric. So I went online looking for other solutions because I did know there were frames, but I, I never really looked into that. And um, I found uh, some frames, but I wasn't sure I was going to like them. And then I actually stumbled upon YouTube and found some more information about the Millennium frame and the Omanic frame. And that's what I ended up. Um, using um, and the reason why I like using the frames is because it gives great tension just like a hoop does but uh, you don't have to hold it you can I actually have a, a frame stand that I can rest it on and then also I can work two-handed which increases my speed as well um, also, what I did like about the frames is that uh, in comparison to a hoop and the Q-step where you, you tend to put on the hoop or the snaps onto some areas that you've already stitched, that is not an issue with frames. You just roll it up and for me it feels like I'm putting less strain on the parts that I've already stitched on. Um, so when I was looking for frames, I found uh, the most common frames are just um, like four rods which you screw on with uh, wing nuts or something. And you based on uh, your stitching fabric to the rods. It looked quite complicated to me and quite fiddly to put together, so I didn't really want to go for that. And then I stumbled upon the Millennium frame. And it looked really easy to use and the reviews were pretty nice and I thought, well, let's have a try with that. So that's actually the first scroll uh, frame that I ever ordered. Um, so the, a few months ago I saw a video from, I think it was D Stitcher about the Omanic uh, frames. And um, after some experience with the Millennium frame, uh, I decided, and I needed more frames, um, I decided to have a try with that, so um, beginning of the year I ordered some of those as well. <coughs> so the two uh, frames I will be discussing today are the Millennium frame, which is made uh, in the UK by Needle Needs. I will put a link in the description. 
and the quantum frame by the Omonic factory, which is located in Estonia. I also put a link to their site uh, down below as well. Um, I have them beside me. Uh, this is the uh, quantum frame by Omonic. And this is the Millennium frame. Um, they work uh, on the same principle. Uh, in the rod, they have a, 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 like a slit, and that holds a pin. And you actually put the fabric between the slit, uh, inside the slit, and then you push the pin in, and that keeps it tight because once you stretch the fabric, it will push up this little pin. And to where it can't get out, and that will actually hold your fabric really tight. Like I'm pulling really hard and it's not moving. So that's the main difference between this type of uh, frame and any frame where you have to base it on, because uh, you don't have to sew anything on or Velcro anything on. You just um, uh, push the fabric into the slit and then add the pin and you're done. Um, also, uh, they use a different kind of screw mechanism compared to the other basting type frames, which is these uh, sidebars, which have uh, screws in them, which you can twist to uh, either put, pull down the rod so the tension loosens, or push up, um, which one was I going this way, or push it up so you increase the tension, it comes harder to screw on, you know that you're getting close to that point where it's really tight. I don't know if you can hear this, but it's really tight. I find that um, compared to hoops or Q-snaps, this frame gives sometimes even better tension uh, than, than those uh, other types of uh, materials. Um, if you want to have a look at how you actually mount the fabric into the frames, um, there are some uh, videos already out there that show it. I will link them below. I, I know D Stitcher and Orietta Stitches uh, did for specifically the Omanic frame. And I've also seen some from By Needle Needs on the how to use the Millennium frame. So if I can find them, I will put a link in below. So I will start off with a, a comparison and um, just a caveat. Um, I'm not a professional stitcher. I've only used these frames for, well, actually since uh, January this year, so about uh, eight months now. Um, I can only share what I've experienced with how I like using them as well as how the ordering process went. So this is not a review, it's just showing you my experiences with the frames. Um, there are similarities in the way that uh, they work. They both have uh, the pins with the rods in it, and they both have the screw type system for the sidebars to stretch the fabric. They both are made of wood ma mainly, and um, the size ranges that they can be ordered in are very similar. Um, the tension is the same. I'm looking to see if I'm not forgetting anything. Um, you can order a complete frame or you can order the stretcher bars or the main bars separately in both cases. That's, that's all up to you, just what you're looking for. You can customize it. So what are the differences? I'll start with the Millennium frame. This is the one I got first. Um, as you can see, it's made entirely out of wood. Um, the wood is, if you can see, it's unvarnished, it's untreated. Um, they have a slightly smaller pin uh, than the Omanic ones have. And uh, also, the screw is made of wood, which is a difference. And another difference is that this, this screw is integrated into the sidebar, so it doesn't come out. It's part of the sidebar. Um, it has round grips instead of square grips. Um, let me see, is there anything else which did the difference? Oh yeah. And when you order it, you get a, a little card, a card, a cardboard card, which you can use to tuck in the fabric nice and evenly. 
and the other one, the Omanic one, doesn't come with that. But I find I can use main any flat thing like an envelope or a pencil or anything to, to put in the fabric. Mm. Looking at... Yeah. So that's the Millennium frame. <coughs> so to show you the difference with the Quantum frame, as you can see, it comes with a plastic. Um, screw and this actually slots into this bar so it comes loose it's separate from this bar which is the main uh, big difference also as you can see and uh, the, the pin is a lot uh, fatter than the uh, millennium one the principle is still the same um, when I um, got it I found that for some mm, Thicker fabrics, like some even weaves, can be a bit thicker. I couldn't get the pin in, so what I did is just sand it down just a little bit, and then it fits perfectly. And it didn't. Um, I don't have any problems with other fabrics which are not as thick that they slip out or something. It's perfect. But that's something that um, was a big difference um, the first time I got it. Um, also, you can see they have uh, square handles. I don't really find that that it bothers me or something. It's just different when you're actually put, picking it up. It's it's square, so it yeah, it's different to hold than the round ones. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, and um, this this is wood, but it is. It is treated, so I think it's varnish or something, and it's also on the, you can see it here maybe, if it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit more shiny, it feels really smooth. Um, I'm, the only thing that has um, worried me a bit about this is that I'm not sure how well this will last, and I'm a bit worried that in the end it might start to peel off if I use it for very long. But, yeah, that might be 20 years from now, so I'm not really bothered about that too much. Um, that's about it uh, regarding the differences, I think. Yeah, so the tension is, is really similar, uh, the way they work is similar, and just details like the size of the pins and the squareness of these uh, sidebars and the way that this is attached, this is loose compared to the Millennium Frame. I don't really find that um, it's bothersome. Um, it can be a bit bothersome uh, when the frame is dismantled because this thing is loose, so if you're not careful it, it just drops to the ground, but you know, it's not when you're working with it, it's not an issue for me. The only thing you have to watch out for, but that's for both frames, um, if you try and, and stretch it out too far, this will come out. And, and with the Millennium one, it just stops at the maximum uh, setting. But um, they also say that it's not, it's not advised to use it on the maximum setting. So it's better to try and rework the fabric so that you don't have to screw it down all the way. Because it might actually uh, warp uh, the, the rods or the the screw bars. So usually I don't um, pull it out all the way, I just try and fit in the fabric so that I don't have to have such a big uh, gap. I hope that makes sense. So I looked uh, up uh, on the internet for you a little bit about the current sizes and price ranges that they offer. Just to give you an idea, I didn't convert uh, the currencies, so it's just as the currencies as they are stated on the website as of today. And that is uh, the 9th of August 2016. So for the Millennium Frame, I have to read this out because my memory is terrible, I'm not going to try and memorize that. Um, the Millennium Frame, um, you can order the frame as in standard sizes, or you can order separate uh, rods or separate bars. Um, if you order the frame, you can um, let them know uh, what size you want the rods to be, so that those are the horizontal uh, parts. And they come in the size range of 20 to 90 
2 cm, so the smallest size is 20 and the biggest is 92, which converts to 8 inches as the smallest size to 36 inches as the widest one. And the price ranges indicated on the website were the smallest one was uh, 17 pounds, which was rounded up. I just want to give you whole numbers. And the largest, the 92 centimeter one, was 29 pounds. That's pretty pound. <clears throat> uh, the separate bars come from 20 centimeters to uh, 38 centimeters, which is 8 to 15 inches tall and they they are more expensive the, the cheapest one is the smallest one of 20 centimeters that was 40 pound and um, the largest one the 38 centimeter one was 48 pound uh, if you uh, if you order the whole frame and uh, you can say what size range you want and it's the same size range as I just said for the separate bars or side stretches and a 30 by 20 frame, so 30 wide by 20 high centimeters, was uh, 56 pound. And a frame, a 92 centimeter wide by 30 high frame, was 70 pound. This all is without shipping. Uh, shipping costs uh, will probably vary according to how much you order. Uh, if you order separate bars as well as a frame, the package will weigh more. So I'm, I'm assuming that will have an effect on the shipping costs, as well as, of course, your own location to the UK. Uh, for me, uh, from the UK to the Netherlands, uh, with just one frame, which is my frame is 50 by 20, I think. Yeah, probably 20. It was 12 pounds shipping costs. Um, they state that they give you a tracking uh, number when they ship, um, and I'll come back to that in a bit. So that was the, the sizes and price ranges for the Millennium Frame. Uh, for the Quantum Frame, it is uh, comparable. Uh, you can order just a frame, again, or separate plots and, and bars, sidebars. Uh, the rods have a size range of 30 to 90 centimeter, which is yeah, almost exactly the same as the Millennium ones. Oh yeah, and uh, just so, so you know, that size is the inside size. So you can see here, there's always a block on the outside to keep the stretcher bars attached. But the measurements are always from the inside uh, of these points. So that's exactly the width, uh, the maximum width of fabric that you can put on it. So a, a 30 uh, size wide bar will be actually wider than 30 centimeters, but the cloth that you can put on it will be maximum 30 centimeters wide. Um, so yeah, they have the rods as well, 30 to 90 centimeters, and the 30 centimeter one was 16 euros and 16. And the 90 centimeter wide rod was 27 euros. Uh, if you order separate bars, they come from 15 to 30 centimeters, and price ranges from 40 to 46 euros. Um, you can order standard frames. Um, they have a specific range of sizes. You, I don't think on the website itself you can actually switch out different sizes of rods and bars but I looked it up and they go from 30 wide by 20 high up to 90 wide by 30 high and that is a price range of 56 to 73 euros. Uh, you can of course order any combination you want and also like with the Millennium Frame you can order extra rods or extra sidebars. And the shipping costs again may vary according to uh, how much you order and where you are located. And for me, from Estonia to the Netherlands, for I ordered two uh, bars, one of 50 centimeter and one 60 centimeter wide, and one pair of stretcher bars, 20 centimeter high, I think. And the shipping cost was 22 euros for me. Um, and they offer a little bit of track and 
trace on the postal service as well. I'll get back to this. So the main experience I can share furthermore are regarding the ordering and the shipping, um, which is the last bit of this video. Um, the Millennium Frame, this was the first type of frame that I found that had this system, which I really liked. Um, that was last summer in August I placed my order um, for just the one frame with uh, 50 centimeter bars and 20 centimeter sidebars. Uh, I ordered online, it was pretty easy to do, there wasn't really any confusion about what I was having to pay or how it was going to work. I received an email confirmation of my order straight away and it did say on the website that they are a small business and they have a long waiting list so I had to expect at least three months waiting time for my frame to arrive. So I uh, waited patiently um, for it to arrive and then uh, after three months I still hadn't heard anything, I hadn't seen anything, I would waited a bit more and then I mailed them to ask what the status was of my order, uh, were they already in process or how much, how much time did they expect me to wait. I did get a reply on that mail and I think it said that they currently had um, I, don't, I don't remember, a certain amount of weeks waiting time and I, I calculated back and I thought well that's actually less than I've already waited so that can't be it. And I decided well I'll just wait another month and see what happens and nothing happened. So I mailed them again asking again, you know, I've inquired before just like an update just to know what I'm in for. Uh, if you'd say it's six months wait, that's fine, just let me know it's six months. I didn't get any re reply on any mail after that. Um, and actually it was turning into 2016 and I was thinking, well, I think I've just been had. I'm never going to get a frame. And I was actually starting to think, am I going to do anything about this? Am I going to report this somewhere? when the doorbell rang and there was a delivery of, it turned out to be the Millennium Frame. Um, so to finish that off, uh, actually a week after the delivery, I got an email saying, your package has been sent, this is the tracking number. I don't know what went wrong there, but that was not very useful to me. I actually replied to that, telling them I already had my package, so I don't know what went wrong there, but let's just say it wasn't a very um, friendly or informative uh, company in that respect. Um, it did come very well packaged. It was wrapped in uh, bubble wrap and was well protected and it only had a paper cover, but because it was wrapped in bubble wrap, there was not really an issue with that. Um, that's all about what I can sell you about what my ordering process and shipping was for the Millennium Frame. So that only leaves uh, the Quantum Frame. I learned about that from Flosstube, Orietta Stitch and D-Stitcher mainly. Um, I was looking for extra frames and I was contemplating ordering another Millennium uh, extra rods or maybe extra sidebars as well and I just I just couldn't do it. Um, it is a great frame, I have no problems with how it works, I was just not ready to wait 5 months, which was 5 months in the end because I ordered in August and I got it in January. So it was five months wait at least, and I've heard other people say they've waited nine months or even longer. And I just th th figured, you know, I'm not going to do that. I will have a go at the Omonic frame. If I like it, then, well, fine. If it's not, then I'll order another Millennium frame and know that I'm in for a long wait. But I, uh, I looked on their website and I was going to order, but I wasn't sure how it worked. I, I, I had some pro trouble with the website. Um, I think they have 
improved it uh, in the meantime, uh, but I had some problem trying to work out how I could order a frame as well as separate rods. So I decided just to mail them. I sent them an email inquiring, you know, I'm looking at your frames, but I want to add extra rods. How do I do that on your website? Can you explain? And I got a reply uh, the same day from the owner, uh, Anton, I think his name is, um, saying, well, it's nice that you are interested in our frames and uh, let me know what you need and I will set it up for you. So I told him, well, I'm looking at these sizes for rods and these sizes for stretcher bars and can you let me know how much that would be in price as well as some information about the shipping. And he replied again in a, within a day giving me all the information I required. So I said, okay, you can place that order for me. Let me know how I need to deal with the payments. And he gave me information for his bank number and how to do a uh, money transfer to that bank account, which I did, which was for me was pretty easy to do. I'm not sure if that would be different from outside of Europe. But um, he told me also that uh, I think they ship uh, Mondays and Thursdays and actually i ordered on the tuesday i think so the next thursday i got an email saying oh, we've put it in the mail for you and this is the tracking code and they sent it in europe they send it with estonia post so the regular postal service and there's no extra insurance or anything but i could do a little bit of tracking not very much but i i, I knew that it had arrived in the netherlands um and I got it, I think I got it on a Monday or Tuesday after that uh, mail that they sent me on the Thursday that they, 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 they had shipped it. So within, within two weeks, I'd say it was just over a week from the first inquiry to actually receiving the package, I had two new uh, rod sizes as well as the stretcher bars. The packaging was a bit different from the Millennium Frame. Uh, they wrap it in cling film, so no bubble wrap. But they did put it in a in a box, which was just a random box they had laying around, I think, because it was for some other product. Um, and I had no damages or anything to it, so for me it was fine. I did notice some damage into the box, so I'm not sure. If that was because they just used a random box he had laying around or that was from shipping. And I have uh, heard on YouTube some people overseas, for instance in Australia, or who have ordered uh, the largest size rods, that they have uh, problems with the packaging because uh, it doesn't fit in the package. So the rod will stick out and sometimes it gets damaged. So that is something that you should... Uh, be concerned about if you order from Omanik and they don't do bubble wrap they will not do the bubble wrap they will just do the cling film and then put it in whatever box they have lying around and what I understand is some people that have ordered the larger size rods uh, it may be packaged in a way that it will actually stick out of the box and they do offer insurance um, for overseas shipping outside of Europe, but inside of Europe they just do the normal postal system and they don't offer insurance. So that's about what I wanted to share. And if I left anything out, if you still have any questions, if you need close-ups of certain parts of the scroll frame, please let me know. Um, I will happily do that for you. But uh, for now, that's it. Until next time.